With the taxidermist's daughter, I realised that I've wanted to write about home always, but I had to go away from home to learn how to do it because I'm a person from Sussex. I am a Cicestrian and when you're at home, really at home, and you have a deep sense of connection to a place, what are you? You're always somebody's daughter, somebody's sister, somebody's mother, <laughs> somebody's wife. Um, you're not writer, first and foremost. Going to France and finding that there were stories in that landscape that came to me and that I wanted to do. In Carcassonne, I was a writer first, all those other things second. And I realised that I couldn't have written about Sussex until I was ready and I'd learnt how to do that. So everything about what makes Labyrinth, the Sepulchre, Citadel, the Winter Ghosts, the novels that they are, it, of course it's the history, it, of course it's the stories, of course it's the very particular thing of the Languedoc. On the surface, this looks like a radical departure because all of my writing really so far has been love letter to Carcassonne and the southwest of France. And people associate me with writing about that very particular type of landscape. But actually it's not a departure. I have a wonderful quotation by the great American writer of landscape, Willa Cather, who said, let your fiction grow from the land beneath your feet. That's the writer I am. It comes out of landscape. Stories and land are indistinguishable. You cannot separate them. And I feel that I walk in those footsteps more than um, anything else. So I didn't choose to write about Sussex. It's been waiting. I was brought up in a little village called Fishbourne, just outside of Chichester in West Sussex. And we moved there in sort of 1961, and I was there all the time until I was a grown-up. And one of the things about that sort of village was, um, it could have been 40 years before, almost 100 years before. So when you stand there as a novelist in that landscape, you are seeing nothing of today. You are only seeing those sort of flickering, almost, you know, they are black and white images. It's very odd how you find yourself being pulled into the, the language of film, which is not my area at all, really. Um, and that's how a novel comes to life. It, it peoples the landscape that you're writing about. And then it feels like a matter of recording it rather than making it up. It never feels like making it up. I was a very... Um, bookish child. Um, I fancied myself in the famous five, really. You know, I read all of those Enid Blyton books and I wanted to be out there uh, charging about finding adventures, falling down tin mines, no tin mines in Sussex. Um, but I spent a lot of time on my own out on the marshes. And we turn right at the duck pond and walk across the first little bridge. And then the second bridge over a stream that when that tide was high, swelled to quite a big river. And then a tiny little third bridge. And then you'd walk along the old seawall where the sluice gates used to be. And at the low tide, there was a path across the mud and the marshes. And you could see the old mill that had burnt down. Um, but I didn't know what it was then. I just knew that there were the remains of something. And of course, as the tide comes in twice a day, that path goes. So there's only a couple of moments when you can get safely across the marshes. And I spend a lot of my time out there on my own. And it was the landscape of my imagination. I can see now. And I can see now that because I grew up there, um, I became a writer. I might not have done if I'd lived somewhere else. <laughs>